Welcome to Mountain Strong. Today I'm in Buckeye, Arizona. Our family has finally arrived here after a month of transition and uh, getting to check out today's Skyline Regional Park. I'm not going to have the time or opportunity to hike on some of the trails here. Look forward to coming back here and exploring this place in a little bit more of its fullness later, but already impressed with its beauty. And you're getting to see a real uh, treat today uh, because we've just had some heavy rain over the last couple of days here in Arizona. And so it's all just a little bit more green than it would be otherwise. There's not a lot of plants that can truly take advantage of that uh, because there really isn't a lot of opportunity for them to survive. But you can just see a nice green tinge to everything because of uh, the rain that we've had. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into our study of the psalm today. We're going to be having a look together at Psalm 146. Let's read that now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Just this morning before coming here, I officially changed our mailing address uh, to our address here in Arizona. And as a part of doing that, the U.S. Postal Service uh, gave me the opportunity to uh, go ahead and apply for, for voter registration here in Arizona. You know, I'm a person who believes in voting. I believe in engaging the system to a degree. But I find that a lot of Christians put too much emphasis on the idea of the democratic process. I think it's important, obviously, to contribute to that process. And that process is here by God's design and God's ordination, because all the powers that be are ordained of God, the Bible says in Romans 13. But I find that, that Christians, again, put too much stock in that process because they believe that it's democracy that controls government, when in fact it's God that controls government. Daniel chapter 4 uh, repeats the statement over and over again that the Lord rules in the kingdoms of men and that he sets over those kingdoms whom he will. And you see, a lot of Christians, I just don't think, realize that. And they think that engaging in very harsh and very bitter uh, commentary on the political system, discussing it openly, publicly, discussing it over social media is a good use of their time. And I'm here to say that we're wasting a lot of our time and a lot of our influence in that. This psalm encourages us not to trust in princes, but to trust in God. And I love the way it uses the term princes, because when we think about it from the standpoint of the Bible, who is king? Who is the king of kings? When we say Jesus Christ, it's as good as saying Jesus the king, because the word Christ, it means anointed one, which references the fact that he is the king. So we're saying Jesus king, the king. Do we believe that? Do we believe that he is the only king and that everyone else is merely a prince? Everyone else is beneath him and below him. Are we convinced that they are going to be our salvation? You know, people wonder what's going to happen to the United States, and they think that the issue is the government. The issue is not the government. The only opportunity that the United States has to get better is for Christians to be Christians, to be the salt and light of the earth. We ruin our influence when we spend so much time on politics that that salt and that light doesn't shine forth and, and taste good to those who encounter it. Christians, we are not to, to, to call people to our political party, but instead we are to call people through our good works to glorify God. And so this psalm is a very precious and important psalm because you look at the issues here. I mean, these issues just jump off the page to you. The, the right of the sojourner, what do we think about when we think about politics? We think about immigrants and all the things going on with that. Well, the Lord watches over that. He cares for those people. What about uh, health care and caring for those who are the marginal members of society? He upholds the widow. He upholds the fatherless. What about bringing uh, evildoers and criminals to justice? The way of the wicked he brings to ruin there in verse 9. Uh, what about uh, the care of people who are captivated by, by heavy uh, tax burdens or, or captivated by uh, you know, financial peril uh, 
predatory uh, lenders and those kinds of things. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. And so it's God who's going to care for all of these issues, ultimately. Who do we trust and, who, and whom do we place our trust? Do we place our trust in a politician, in a prince? Or do we place our trust in God, the King, in Jesus, from a New Testament point of view, the King? And so, if we are a people who praise, notice how the psalm is surrounded in praise. Verses 1 and 2 and 10 uh, kind of form a praise sandwich. They form an inclusio, as we've talked about in previous videos. Uh, this idea of praise the Lord is encapsulated, uh, is encapsulating this psalm. And so, if we're a people of praise, a people who, who truly praise the Lord, then we are not going to be people who trust in princes, realizing that their plans will perish, verse 4. But instead, we're going to trust in God. Why should we do so? Because in verses 5 and 6, He created the earth, and because in verses 7 through 9, it is He who brings justice and He who brings deliverance. And so, Christians, I want to encourage you, obviously, uh, vote your conscience. Vote the, the moral issues, but at the same time, don't trust in politicians. Trust in God and realize that no matter what your vote is, God is overruling this process and He's going to bring to government whoever He desires. And if that is a leader that is immoral and, and uh, he does terrible things, that remember that the New Testament was written in the context of a very immoral government. And Christians in the New Testament were told to submit to that government. Whoever is the leader, we don't bring, a, as, the, as the book of Jude speaks about, a, an accusation, a railing accusation against him. Uh, Michael the Archangel didn't even do that with, with Satan. And so we support the government, we pay our taxes, we, we honor uh, those who are in those positions. We honor God, of course, more. And we try to let our influence be an influence of praise to our God that speaks volumes to the world around us and causes people to join in that chorus of praise. May God bless you today.